Okay then gang, so now we're listing all these products on this page. Next, I wanna add a link to each of these products that goes to the product details page for each one of these. Now, in order to do that, we need to make just a single product details component. And then inside that component, fetch whichever product that we need. So the product data will be different in that component when we go to different product pages, but the component itself can be the same for each product. There's no need to make it multiple times. The only thing we need to do in that component is get the ID of the product that we need to fetch each time. And that ID can be something we put in the route path. For example, the route to a product details page could be forward slash product maybe, then forward slash the ID of whatever product that we wanna see. So that could be one, two, three, or 500 or whatever. Now that ID part of the route would change, right? Each time, depending on what product that we click on on the homepage. But no matter what that ID is, we always wanna show the same product details component. And inside that, we can figure out a way to get the ID from the URL and then use that to fetch the right product for us and inject it into the component. Now, the name for a changeable part of a route like this is called a route parameter, and we can work with them really easily in solid. So first of all, we need to set up a component for this product details route. So I'm gonna create that inside the pages folder. I'm gonna call this product.jsx, and inside here, we need to export default function, call it product, and then inside here, we need to return some kind of template. Make sure you spell default correctly, like so. All right, so all I'm gonna do inside this template is a div, first of all, and all I'll do is just say product details. So we know that this is the product details page. Now inside the app component, we need to register a route for this product details page. So let me duplicate this, then change the path to forward slash product, forward slash something or other. So when we're creating a route parameter in the path, we use a colon, then the name of the route parameter. In our case, it's gonna be ID, but it can be whatever you want it to be. It can be A, B, C if you want it to be. So I'm gonna call it ID because we're gonna use the ID of the product inside the route path. And the component we load for this is going to be the product component, which should be imported now up here, yeah. Okay, so this means that if we go to forward slash product, then forward slash one or two or three, then it's gonna show this product details component. So let's test that out first of all. I'm gonna to go to forward slash product, then forward slash five, and we see product details. If it's one, it will be product details. If it's 500, it will be product details. Okay, so this is working. The next thing I'd like to do is I would like to, from the homepage, place some kind of link in each product card. So it would go to the product details component for that product. So to do that, we're gonna use the A component. Remember, that needs to come from the solid router. So over here, I'm just gonna copy this and paste it inside the home component at the top and get rid of the other two things. We don't need those, but keep this A component. So we have this component. The href of this is gonna be equal to forward slash product, but then we want the ID on the end of this. So we need this to be dynamic. So I'm gonna place curly braces around this, like so, and then after forward slash product, another forward slash, and then we can concatenate, so just a plus sign, the product.id property, and that's coming from this product. Remember, we have the ID property right here. So we will just say inside this anchor tag, something like view product, it doesn't really matter. And I'm also gonna give this a class as well, equal to BTN, which was the global class we created earlier. So it looks a bit better. Let's go to the homepage. Now we can see these buttons, view product. And when we click on one of these, it goes to whatever ID we have for that product. So that was three. If I go to this one, it's five. So this is all working. Now, the next thing we need to do is get this ID inside this product component right here. And the way we do that is by using a function called use params. So inside here, we're gonna say const params is equal to use params and invoke it like so. Now that needs to be imported from the solid JS router package. So up at the top, import use params from at solid JS forward slash router. Okay, so now we have that. We should now have an ID property on this params object. And the property name will match whatever you've called the route parameter down here. 
So we called it ID, so we'll have an ID property. If you called it ABC, it would be an ABC property. Either way, we can extract any route parameter we use. So now what I'll do is a dash, and then I'll output, oops, dash, then I'll output params.id, just so we can see the ID of the product that we've landed on. So we can see right here, it's five. If we go home, click on this one, it should be one, yep. If we click on this one, it's four. So this is all working now. We have access to this ID parameter and we can use that therefore to fetch the correct product that we need from this file and then show that data in the template. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a function up here that is gonna be able to fetch that individual product. And because I'm super lazy, I'm gonna to go to the homepage, copy this function that gets all of the products and place it in here. We'll just edit this so it's fetch product instead of products. And then also we need to make it so it fetches a single product, not all of them. So forward slash, and then we would concatenate some kind of ID. Now, where do we get that ID from? Because this function is outside the scope of this function right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the create resource function again. So I'll say const and then product, and we'll set that equal to create resource like so and we need to import that. So let me go over here and grab this import and I'm gonna paste it right here as well. And then inside this, we pass in this function, fetch product, like so. Now also, as another argument, the first argument, in fact, we can pass in some kind of value or signal. And that value now can be passed in here as an argument. So we'll receive whatever we pass in here inside this function and we can use it. So we're passing in the ID parameter Therefore, we can accept it as an argument and use it inside this endpoint right here. So we're now fetching that individual product. All right, so now we have that, we can output it inside the template. So let's get rid of this and let's in fact give this a class right here of MY7 to give it some margin in the Y direction. And then inside here, we only want to output the product when we have the product data. So remember, to conditionally output something, we use the show component. So show. And then that's going to be when we have a value for product and the fallback is going to be equal to a paragraph tag that says loading dot dot dot. All right. So inside the show component, we want to output some data for the product. Now, what I'm going to do is just copy this template from my course files. So you don't have to watch me type it all out, but then I will walk through it after I've moved this in a little bit. Oops, that's wrong. Okay, and we need to scoot this up a little bit as well. All right, so first of all, we have a div right here, which is display grid, five columns, gap seven. On the left, spanning two columns, we have an image, and we're using the image property from the product, so that's the source. And then on the right, we have another div, which spans three columns, and we have the title right here, the product title, that's what we're outputting. The product description, Remember all of these properties are on the products. And then finally, the product price down here and outside that a little pound sign as well. So we should see the image on the left and then on the right, the title of the product, the description, and also the price, okay? So let's save that and preview. And if we go over here, we should see, yeah, we saw loading first, then the image and all the information on the right. Go back home and choose a different product. We see loading, then the image, and all of the information on the right. Awesome, so this is all working my friends. Now we have a product details page for each of the products.